everybody, it's Lisa Marie here, hanging out with my friends Jeff and Charlotte. We're doing another Martini Talk show. Hi, my sweet lifers. Listen, today is a really special episode. We're talking about an organization called Stupid Strong. It's about stomach cancer. We've got a lot of really important information to share with you. We're going to be doing a tournament in November in Siena. It's a softball tournament yes. to honor Charlotte's husband. And um, I want to thank you guys for being here today. And thank you. Yeah, talk to me about the organization, how it started, and everything about that. Well, um, I would say that Charlotte and I are kind of reluctant spokespeople for this cause. Um, the Stupid Strong organization was founded in 2014 when my wife was diagnosed with stomach cancer. Um, she went through a, a lot for three years, and we lost her in 2017. Um, but when she was diagnosed, we both wanted to do something, um, and uh, we were very fortunate to have good insurance and could afford what we needed to for health care, uh, but we knew that there was uh, a need for having more research. Uh, if you don't know, uh, stomach cancer is one of the rare uh, deadly diseases. Mm -hmm. um, about a million people worldwide get diagnosed with stomach cancer. Uh, in the U.S., it's not as prevalent. About 25,000 people get diagnosed every year but about 10,000 people die. So it's a five-year survival rate is very low, um, as you can imagine. Um, and so when we when we found out, it was a shock, as you can imagine. For sure. Um, she was very young, very healthy, had no um, signs of anything wrong. Uh, and that's something indicative of stomach cancer. It's asymptomatic, where you really don't have any way to know that you have it. And when you find out you have it, it's usually too late. Um, most people that get diagnosed are stage three or stage four, which again is a very low survival rate. But anyways, when we, when we found out she was diagnosed, we wanted to give back to the community. We wanted to raise money for research to help those behind her. Mm -hmm. um, and so we founded an organization called Stupid Strong. You might think that's an odd name. Um, but the reason why it's named that way, um, my wife was, was very animated. Um, she, if you knew her, you knew that she loved two things. One was uh, gathering, so she would love to get around the table and eat and enjoy food. Um, and the second thing is actually enjoying uh, dining and you know entertainment. Uh, and so she she entertained a lot. She went out um, work occasions uh, and um, experienced a lot of fine restaurants. And when she would come back. Uh, she would animatedly describe the experience that she had, and she was one of those that talks with her hands. Yeah. And uh, and whenever she was experiencing something that was really cool, she'd always say that was just stupid good, and that was her catchphrase for all of these um, conversations uh, around the table. And so as we tried to figure out what the name of the organization was going to be, one of the friends said we should just call it S Stupid Strong, kind of along the lines of a lot of the cancer awareness organizations and it stuck and so the first year that we were in existence we had a couple of little fundraisers it was a little park walk just in our neighborhood started out um, we raised about twenty thousand dollars it wasn't a whole big deal um, but now we do two major fundraisers um, now three because we're expanding in the Houston area which is fun for us uh, we are based out of Dallas Fort Worth area um, but the organization now has raised in its seven years uh, close to a million dollars in awesome. uh, research funding. So we're really excited about this new event that Charlotte's going to talk about. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the, uh, the background for the organization. That's very, very cool. Yeah. 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 It's so interesting to me how many opportunities there are in the community whenever you start to put your feelers out there, you know, with all the work that I did with the cancer, breast cancer, kids cancer, you know. There's a need everywhere, and a lot of people don't realize there's a lot of different kinds of cancers that are just the silent killers, and nobody even thinks about stomach yeah. cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just not even something that you even think about. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's important to bring awareness to that for sure. Absolutely. And I think in most recent years, um, there's been a lot more diagnosis for people under 40, so mm -hmm. it's actually hitting a younger yep. group, which is not good. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's even more important to kind of raise awareness to diagnose it early. And then, obviously, for research, we want to have more treatment options when, when they do get diagnosed. So that's our goal. Okay. Yeah. Charlotte. Guys, Charlotte's family. Jeff is, too, now that he's here. Y'all know how I am. If you're landed on my couch, your family. Charlotte's been with me for, well, in spirit, for a long time. 
uh, Sonya has been on the channel Amazing Window Cleaners, and she's been with me for, gosh, almost 18, if not longer, years. I've been their portrait artist, and you have known me for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And so talk to me about your story, what, what's brought us here today in terms of our tournament for Sienna, and this coming November 14th, by the way, in Sienna Plantation. Talk to me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I've been affected, obviously, by this the same cancer as well. My husband, Adam, was diagnosed in November of 2019 at stage four. He was 46 years old, so young and otherwise healthy and very minimal symptoms. As Jeff said, a lot of times there's not anything that presents. So, um, you know, obviously a devastating diagnosis for our family. We were a blended family of six, you know, four children between the two of us, um, had a lot of plans for the future that, you know, as everyone does. Went awry. Yeah. Um, but he fought the good fight and uh, did everything that he could. And um, unfortunately, we lost him last August. So tough year, but uh, we really talked a lot about what it meant for us as a family. And we had the opportunity to travel to Washington, D.C. last February, right before the pandemic kind of hit the scene. So that was a huge blessing when I look back on that. Mm -hmm. Um, as part of an advocacy event that took place, the annual event that took place, um, where we were able to talk with members of Congress about research and funding and really just raising more awareness about stomach cancer and why it should be on the annual federal budget, essentially. Um, and it was at that time that we both met Jeff and his daughter traveled with him and several members of the Stupid Strong Board. So. That was a, a great opportunity for us to get connected with a Texas-based um, nonprofit. For sure. And, yeah. and so we kept in touch, and uh, Adam was very adamant about staying connected with them after he was gone, really wanted to carry forward the fight for those that were coming behind him. Mm -hmm. um, and so the softball tournament is my way of honoring him. He was a ball player his whole life. He loved baseball. He was good. He was very good. Um, he actually once tried out for the Skeeters, which is the minor league team. Yes. In Shirley, yes. Just to say he could. Yes. <laughs> um, I've been there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, so this is my way of again just kind of bringing a passion of his, and you know, softball is is something that allows both men and women to play together as a team. He would love that. His daughter, Ava, played softball um, in high school. I mean, he taught her everything that she knew, and she was quite good as well. And so, um, super excited about this event. I've lived in Siena for 18 years. This is the first time ever that the community of Siena will, will have an event like this, a charity tournament. And so, I'm looking for the community to kind of just rally behind it and make it a very family focused type of event mm -hmm. so bringing out the family have activities for the kids and um, just super excited about it and I'll be there by the way yeah for those of you who are interested in following all of that nonsense <laughs> yeah. So, yeah Sunday November 14th right the date. have we got a time yes so it'll start between 8 30 and 9 in the morning okay. and go all day till about 5 30 we're looking to sign up 30 teams okay. again all co-ed so men and women together and we'll have the details up on the stupid strong site shortly and i'll have it in the episode notes below we're actually taping this guys early first part of august because as you guys know i'll like drop stuff on my social media and keep dropping it um those things that are coming up that we need to kind of keep putting at the top of mind and what i'm going to do is i'll continuously post this so that while we're forming the teams we'll be able to get in touch with you so that you can get those established. And then once those teams have been established, I'll change that in the episode information a little bit and then tweak it on the social media so that you'll know the time and the date to be there and the activities that you guys have gathered together. Because I imagine there's going to be lots of fun stuff for the kids to do too all day. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have a DJ out there playing tunes all day. He's going to bring some entertainment. There's going to be a face painter and a balloon artist. We've got food trucks. We've got Carl. Food trucks, exactly. Two chef show share and what you know, we got Carl's barbecue. Yes. And brisket balls, the best there is in Fort Bend County, by the way. Yes. So we'll also be cool doing a raffle. Um, so there'll be raffle baskets. Yeah, and there's well. free Me Too. I forgot <laughs> about that. There's free photo shoots, a couple thousand dollar packages with Me Too. So, yeah. Yes, that is awesome. Yeah. Um, and at the end of it, we'll be raffling off Adam's um, Harley motorcycle. 
Right. So tell me about that. Yeah. So he was also, I mean, a motorcycle guy. So he loved motorcycles. He had two of them when I first met him. He sold one to buy my engagement ring. <laughs> Sounds like my friend. Sounds like a smart man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but he ended up buying this, uh, this Harley about, uh, gosh, four months before he was diagnosed. So actually he only rode it maybe once or twice. Um, so it literally is new. And, um, uh, I think he would be thrilled to know that this was going towards the cause. I know he would. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for being here today. It's been wonderful visiting with you. Not wonderful about the situation, but you know what? We always make lemonade. God has a way of doing that and putting people in our lives that can help us move and, mm -hmm. and be able to make a difference. Absolutely. And despite the fact that there's all kinds of stuff going on that are out of our control. So mm -hmm. I'm excited about being a part of helping you and you as well. And if there's anything I can do in Dallas, I know Houston's not that far away. Mm -hmm. I'm here and can do that too. And um, I really thank you guys for being here. And I thank you guys for watching. And listen, don't forget to check at the episode notes. Tune in to watch what we're doing more and more about this. I'll actually be on location the day of, November the 14th, as well, and taping as well there as, uh, for the channel. So if you found any value, do us a favor, like and share. Don't forget to ring the bell, and we'll see you soon on another Martini Talks. Take care.